Convair B-36 Peacemaker Bomber History The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress has the nickname Big Ugly Fat Fella, or just the buff. But is it the biggest bomber that ever served? Believe it or not, the answer is no. There was a much bigger bomber in the fleet, and while it never dropped a bomb in anger, it was the backbone of the Strategic Air Command SAC in its early years. The plane was the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. Its wingspan was 230 feet, compared to 185 feet for a B-52. It was 162 feet long, compared to just over 159 feet for the B-52, and it could carry up to 86,000 pounds of bombs. The B-52's maximum bomb load is 70,000 bombs. What was its nickname? The Gargantuan B-36, in service from 1948 to 1959, was the Air Force's first true intercontinental bomber. It made heavy use of magnesium to reduce weight and was widely known as the Magnesium Overcast. Another nickname, Big Stick, denoted its role as the strong sword of the sack in the early days of the Cold War. Manufacturer Convair proposed the name Peacemaker, and while not officially adopted, that name came into common use. The genesis of the B-36 can be traced to early 1941, prior to U.S. entry into World War II. At the time, it seemed possible that Britain might fall to the German Blitz, making a strategic bombing effort by the U.S. Army Air Corps, USAC, against Germany, impossible with existing aircraft. The U.S. would need a new class of bomber that could reach Europe and return to bases in North America necessitating a combat range of at least 5,700 miles, the length of a Gander Newfoundland Berlin round trip. Consolidated Valti Aircraft Corporation and Boeing Aircraft Company competed for a contract to produce such a bomber, with Consolidated winning a tender on October 16, 1941. As the Pacific War progressed, the Army Air Forces increasingly needed a bomber capable of reaching Japan from bases in Hawaii and the development of the B-36 resumed in earnest. First delivery was due in August 1945 and the last in October 1946, but consolidated by this time renamed Convair after its 1943 merger with Balti Aircraft, delayed delivery. The aircraft finally was unveiled on August 20th, 1945, just as the war was ending, and flew for the first time on August 8th, 1946. The years following World War II were a fascinating time for aviation. The war had brought incredibly rapid technological advancement, bridging the gap between small, slow-propeller aircraft and impossibly fast jets. Aeronautical engineers now had copious amounts of new technology, and the looming threat of the Cold War provided impetus for even more development. Countless new ideas were thrown together to see what would stick or more accurately, fly. From this confluence emerged unique aircraft, the likes of which were never seen before or since. The B-36 took shape as an aircraft of immense proportions. It was two-thirds longer than the previous super bomber, the B-29. The wingspan and tail height of the B-36 exceeded those of the 1960s Soviet Union's Antonov An-22 Antheus military transport the largest ever propeller-driven aircraft put into production. Only with the advent of the Boeing 747 and the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy, both designed two decades later, did American aircraft capable of lifting a heavier payload become commonplace. Operation The propulsion system of the B-36 was unique, with six 28-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R-4360 WASP major radial engines mounted in an unusual pusher configuration rather than the conventional four-engine tractor propeller layout of other heavy bombers. The prototype R4360s delivered a total of 18,000 horsepower, 13,000 kilowatts. While early B36s required long takeoff runs, this situation was improved with later versions delivering a significantly increased total output of 22,800 horsepower, 17,000 kilowatts. 
Each engine drove a three-bladed propeller, 19 feet in diameter, mounted in the pusher configuration. This was the second largest diameter propeller design ever used to power a piston-engined aircraft, after that of Germany's Linke Hoffmann R2. This unusual configuration prevented propeller turbulence from interfering with airflow over the wing, but could also lead to engine overheating due to insufficient airflow around the engines, resulting in in-flight engine fires. The large, slow-turning propellers interacted with the high-pressure airflow behind the wings to produce an easily recognizable, very low-frequency pulse at ground level that betrayed approaching flights. Holding the title of the largest production piston engine bomber in the world, everything about the Peacemaker was massive. Six turbo-supercharged piston engines were supplemented by two General Electric J4719 jet engines mounted under each wingtip. The turbo supercharger used an engine-driven supercharger together with an exhaust-spun turbocharger. Each piston engine cranked out 3,800 horsepower. Each jet engine produced 5,200 pounds of thrust. The thunder of 168 pistons turning and four jet engines burning rattled windows nationwide. The B-36 had a crew of 15. The pressurized flight deck and crew compartment were linked to the rear compartment by a pressurized tunnel through the bomb bay. Movement through the tunnel was on a wheeled trolley pulling on a rope. The rear compartment featured six bunks and a dining gallery and led to the tail turret. It took the ground crew six hours to prepare the bomber for a mission, and the flight crew needed another hour for a pre-flight check involving 600 steps, beginning with climbing the landing gear and removing the clamps that kept the gear from folding accidentally. The four bomb bays could carry up to 87,200 pounds of bombs, more than 10 times the load carried by the World War II workhorse, the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, and substantially more than the entire B-17's gross weight. Until the B-52 became operational, the B-36 was the only means of delivering the first-generation Mark 17 hydrogen bomb, 20 feet long, 5 feet in diameter, and weighing 42,000 pounds, the heaviest and bulkiest American aerial nuclear bomb ever. Carrying this massive weapon required merging two adjacent bomb bays, and the B-36 was the only aircraft designed to carry the T-12 Cloudmaker, a gravity bomb weighing 43,600 pounds and designed to produce an earthquake bomb effect. The defensive armament consisted of six remote-controlled retractable gun turrets and fixed tail and nose turrets. Each turret was fitted with two 20mm cannon for a total of 16. Recoil vibration from gunnery practice often caused the aircraft's electrical wiring to jar loose or the vacuum tube electronics to malfunction, leading to failure of the aircraft controls and navigation equipment. This contributed to the crash of a B-36B on November 22, 1950. Challenges About the time the B-36 became operational, SAC received a new commanding officer, Lieutenant General Curtis E. LeMay. He found SAC to be in complete disarray, with less than half the available aircraft operational, crews undertrained, low morale, and minimal base and security standards. LeMay quickly set new high standards of performance including rigorous training for officers and enlisted alike. However, he also was known for his concern for the comfort and well-being of personnel under his command. Receiving his fourth star in 1951, at age 44, LeMay became the youngest four-star general since Ulysses S. Grant. But inner clashes continued. In 1947, the U.S. Air Force became independent of the Army and faced daunting challenges. There was the threat from a new adversary, the Soviet Union, and there were challenges at home as well, particularly from the Navy, which viewed those in the new uniforms as rivals for diminishing defense funds and from within, as the Air Force struggled to introduce jet-powered aircraft into operational service. In the spring of 1949, the country got a new Secretary of Defense, Lewis Johnson, a wealthy lawyer, aspiring politician, and former official with the Convair Corporation, 
which was a longtime supplier of U.S. military aircraft. The last connection, which today would seem a scandal worthy of a special prosecutor, was common at the time. Who knew more about weapons than the men who built them? When President Harry Truman ordered Johnson to economize, he obliged in April by canceling the 65,000-ton supercarrier United States, the keel of which had been laid only a week before. Following this cancellation, the situation became known as the Revolt of the Admirals, and it pitted the Navy's aircraft carrier against the Air Force's strategic bombing force. More specifically, Convair's monster six-engine bomber, the B-36. The first shot in the battle was fired by Cedric Wirth, a civilian assistant to Navy Undersecretary Dan Kimball for special study and research, as he later described his duties. It came in the form of a nine-page memo for the Navy's internal use, though he admitted giving copies to three members of Congress and to aircraft manufacturer Glenn Martin. The document condemned the B-36 as an obsolete and unsuccessful aircraft and charged that the Air Force had acquired it only after Convair had contributed $6.5 million to various Democratic politicians. The B-36 was described as a lumbering cow and a billion-dollar blunder, and the Navy claimed it had at least three jet fighters that could leave the monster behind at 40,000 feet. The Fuhrer, as well as the significant use of aircraft carriers in the Korean War, resulted in the design and procurement of the subsequent forestal class of supercarriers, which were geared towards multi-role use, with composite air wings of fighter, attack, reconnaissance, electronic warfare, early warning, and anti-submarine warfare aircraft. At the same time, heavy manned bombers for SAC were also deemed crucial to national defense. As a result, the two systems were never again in competition for the same budgetary resources. Obsolescence The B-36 was in service with SAC from 1948 to 1959. The RB-36 variant was used for reconnaissance during the Cold War with the Soviet Union. One of SAC's initial missions was strategic aerial reconnaissance on a global scale. The first efforts were photo reconnaissance and mapping. Along with the photo reconnaissance mission, a small electronic intelligence cadre was operating. Weather reconnaissance was part of the effort, as was long-range detection, the search for Soviet atomic explosions. With the appearance of the Soviet MiG-15 in combat over North Korea in 1950, propeller-driven bombers were rendered obsolete as strategic offensive weapons. The B-36 had been designed during World War II, prior to the jet age, a new generation of swept-wing jet bombers able to fly higher and faster was needed to effectively overcome the MiG-15 or subsequent interceptors if the Cold War escalated into armed conflict. Two major factors contributed to the obsolescence of the B-36. First, it lacked aerial refueling capability, instead requiring intermediate refueling bases to reach planned targets deep in the Soviet Union. Second, its slow speed made it vulnerable to jet interceptors, thus severely decreasing its likelihood of reaching targets. As with the strategic bombardment versions, the RB-36 was phased out of the SAC inventory beginning in 1956, the last being sent to davis monthan Air Force Base in January 1959. The B-36 never went to war, never dropped a bomb in anger, nor, so far as we know, even fired its cannon at an enemy airplane. Created at a time when the atomic bomb redefined strategic air power and the turbojet redefined performance, its career spanned the crossroads that divided two eras. Of the nearly 400 examples built, only four intact examples remain. Despite its record size, the B-36 was largely overshadowed by its more famous predecessor, the B-29, and its long-lived successor, the still-flying B-52. The Peacemaker never saw combat and was only in service for 11 years, but its bizarre design is an example of a unique time in aviation history. More importantly, the Mammoth aircraft remained a potent deterrent throughout its service and more than lived up to its nickname, Peacemaker.
If you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. For more interesting military history content, check out our video library.